Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we will create our VPC for this project. Our VPC is going to be a three-tier architecture. On the first tier, we will create a public subnet in two different availability zones. We will create a private subnet for our EC2 instance in two different availability zones on the second tier. And on the third tier, we will create another private subnet in two different availability zones for our database. Let's go to the management console to create our VPC. To create our VPC, first we are going to select the region where we want to create our VPC. Currently, I'm in the Northern Virginia region. And if you want to create your VPC in a different region, select this drop down and select your region. Next, we are going to create our VPC. To create our VPC, select services. Then come down to networking and content delivery and select VPC or you can type it up here. I'm going to select VPC. On the VPC dashboard, select your VPCs. And we are going to select create VPC. We'll give it a name. I'll call it test VPC. And I'm going to assign an IPv4 CIDR block. I'll assign a 10 to 0. Dot zero, dot zero slash 16. Then we are going to leave everything else as default. We are not going to assign an IPv6 CIDR block and click create VPC. We have successfully created our VPC. Refresh your page. And now let's select subnets. And to filter it just to see just the subnets in your VPC. Under filter by VPC, select the drop down and select your VPC you just created. And now you are only going to see what is in that VPC. Currently, we don't have any subnet in that VPC. Another thing I also want to mention is that when you create your VPC, it will create a route table for you. So select route table. You should see one route table in there. And it will also create a security group. So select security group. And I'll filter this again. And you should see that security group. We are going to cover this later on in this lecture, but I just want to mention it now. The next thing we are going to do is enable the DNS host name in our VPC. So select your VPCs again. I'm going to select my test VPC. Under actions, select the drop down and select edit DNS host names. And in here, make sure this is enabled and click save changes. The next thing we are going to do now is create an internet gateway. The internet gateway is what allow resources in our VPC to have access to the internet. To create our internet gateway, on the left side, select internet gateways. And we are going to select create internet gateway. We'll give it a name. I'll call it test internet gateway and click create internet gateway. We have now created our internet gateway. The next thing we need to do is attach this internet gateway to our VPC. To attach this internet gateway to our VPC, you can select attach to VPC up here or under actions, you can select attach to VPC. Let's attach this internet gateway to our VPC. I'm going to select attach to VPC. Now select this drop down and I'll select my VPC and click attach internet gateway. Now you see that the state of that internet gateway is attached and the VPC we attach it to is our test VPC. Next, we are going to create our two public subnets. To create our public subnets on the left side, select subnet. And again, if you just want to see what is in your VPC, you can filter it. So close that and select it again. So we should filter it. We are going to select create subnet. And we are going to select the VPC we want to put it in. Select this drop down. Now I'm going to select my test VPC. Now scroll down. For our subnet name, I'll call it public subnet one. And under availability zone, I'm going to select this drop down and I'm going to put it in the US East 1A in the region that I selected. Then for IPv4 CIDR block, 
I'm going to assign a CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Once you've entered your CIDR block, scroll down and click create subnet. We have created our public subnet 1 in the US East 1A availability zone in our test VPC. Next, let's create our public subnet 2. I'll select create subnet. I'll select this drop down and select my VPC. I'll scroll down, I'll enter my subnet information. I'll call it public subnet 2. And under availability zone, I'll select the drop down. This time I want to put it in the US East 1B in the region that I selected. And then for CIDR block, I'm going to give it a CIDR block of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And then scroll down and click create subnet. And if I close this and filter this again by my VPC, you can see the two subnet we just created. We have public subnet one and public subnet two. One is in the US is 1A availability zone. The second is in the US is 1B availability zone. The next thing we are going to do is modify the IP settings for this subnet so that any resources we put in them will be automatically assigned an IP address. To do that, I'm going to select public subnet one and I'm going to select actions and I'll select modify auto IP settings. And in here, select enable and click save. And we are going to do the same for public subnet two. I'll select public subnet two. Under actions, modify auto IP settings, enable and click save. Now, the next thing we need to do is create our route table for our public subnet. To do that, we are going to select route tables on the left side. And when we create our VPC, it created this route table for us. By default, this is the private route table and this is the main route table. We are going to be using this later on, but for now, just leave it as it is. Click create route table and give your route table a name. I'll call it public route table. Then we are going to select the VPC we want to put it in. Select my test VPC and click create and click close. We have now created our public route table. You can see it here. The next thing we have to do is add a route to this public route table so that this route table is able to route traffic to the internet through our internet gateway. To do that, we are going to select our public route table Make sure you select your public route table, not the default one. Then come on that route. And currently you see we have local route, which means that this route table is only routing traffic in our VPC. So add a route to the internet. We are going to select edit route. I'm going to select add route. And in here type zero. And you should see this, select it. And on that target, select the drop down and select the internet gateway. And you should see your internet gateway in here. Select it and click save route and click close. Now we have added a public route to this route table. And this route table is able to route traffic to the internet through our internet gateway. The next thing we need to do now is Make sure that we associate our public subnet 1 and public subnet 2 to this route table. And this is what makes those subnet public. Remember, the difference between a public subnet and a private subnet is a public subnet has an internet gateway attached to the route table and a private subnet does not have an internet gateway attached to its route table. So we are going to attach those two public subnets to this route table. To do that, while you select your public route table, select subnet associations. Then currently we don't have any subnet associated with this route table. To associate subnet with this route table, select edit subnet association. And in here, you are going to see your public subnet one and public subnet two. Select both and click save. And once you click save, 
we have now associated those two public subnet with this route table. So under this route table, you can see that we have two subnets there. And those subnets are our public subnet 1 and public subnet 2. And that's all we need to do to create our public subnets. Next, let's create our private subnets. Remember, we need four private subnets. So on the left side, I'm going to select subnet. I'll filter this again by my VPC. And I'm going to select create subnet. I'll select the VPC that I want to put it in. Then I'll scroll down. For subnet name, I'm going to enter private subnet 1 up here. And for availability zone, I'm going to select the drop down. And I'm going to put it in the US East 1A availability zone. For the CIDR block, I'm going to assign a 10.0.2.0 slash 24 CIDR block. And scroll down and click create subnet. We are going to create another private subnet. Remember, we need four. I select this drop down. I'm going to put it in my test VPC. The subnet name, I'll call it private subnet 2 up here. Then under availability zone, I'll select the drop down. This time, I'll put it in the US is 1B availability zone. For CIDR block, I'll give it 10.0.3.0 slash 24. And then scroll down and click create subnet. I'm going to create another subnet again. And I'll select the drop down and I'll put it in my VPC. For the subnet name, it is going to be private subnet 3 database tier. Then for the availability zone, I'll select the drop down and I'll put it in the US is 1A availability zone. The side up block. Is going to be 10.0.4.0 24. And scroll down and click create subnet. We are going to create our last private subnet. Click create subnet. Select the drop down, put it in your VPC. A subnet name, it is going to be private subnet 4. On the availability zone, select the drop down. This time we are going to put it in the US is 1B availability zone. For CIDR block, it is going to be 10.0.5.0 24. And scroll down and click create subnet. And now let's filter this again by our VPC. I'm going to cancel all this, clear filter, and filter it again by my VPC. And now you can see all the subnets in our VPC. We have two public subnets and four private subnets. We are going to create the private route tables for these private subnets in the next lecture. And you may be asking yourself that, are these subnets private? And the answer is yes. These private subnets that we created are going to be private. That is because if we go under route tables, select route tables, we have two route tables in our VPC currently. We have a public route table and we have associated our public subnet to that route table. We have the default route table which was created for us, which is the main route table. And what happens with this main route table is anytime you create subnet and you don't explicitly associate those subnet with a route table, those subnets are going to be associated with the main route table. And the main route table is private by default. So for our four private subnets that we just created that we have not associated with any route table, those private subnets will be associated with this main route table, which is private by default. Because again, look, if I select it and I select routes, you can see that this route table only routes traffic locally. And that is what we want. In the next lecture, when we create our NAT gateway, we are going to create our private route table and we are going to associate them with our private subnet. So that concludes creating our private subnets. The next thing we can do now is create our security groups for this project. Since we can find security group in the VPC, let's just create our security group in this lecture and be done with it. So on the left side, I'm going to select security groups. Before we create our security groups, Let's look at our reference architecture for this project. 
these are the resources we are going to be using in this project. We are going to use security groups to control how traffic flows through them. By this, we are implementing what we call principle of least privilege. Only the application load balancer would accept traffic coming from the internet. And our web servers are only going to accept traffic coming from our application load balancer. And our database is only going to accept traffic from our web servers. Let's create our security group. In our VPC dashboard, I'm going to filter again by my VPC so we can see the security group we currently have in this VPC. Currently, we have the default security group. The first security group we are going to create is the security group for our application load balancer. To create the security group, select create security group. And I'm going to call it an application load balancer security group. And I'll give it the same name as the description. And I'm going to select the drop down and select the VPC that I want to put it in. And under inbound rule, we are going to add a rule. The first rule is going to be HTTP. It's going to be on port 80. And the source is going to be anywhere. So in here, type 0. So it should be 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0. Next, we are going to add another rule. I'm going to add a rule. And this rule is going to be HTTPS on port 443. And in here, we are going to type 0 again, anywhere. And once you've added those two rules, scroll down and click Create Security Group. And we have created that security group. The next security group we are going to create is our SSH security group. The SSH security group will allow us to be able to SSH into our web servers. To create this security group, I'm going to select Security Groups here. And select create security group i'll give it a name i'll call it ssh security group and i'll give it the same name as the description and i'll select the drop down and put it in my vpc under inbound rules we are going to add an ssh rule select add rule select this drop down and select ssh on that source you always want to limit your ssh rule to your IP address. So select on that source and select my IP. And that is going to limit it to the IP of your computer. This means that only the computer that I'm working on now can SSH into my EC2 instance. Then scroll down and click create security group. Next, we are going to create a security group for our web servers or our EC2 instance. I'm going to select security groups on the left side. I'm going to select create security group. I'll call it web server security group. And I'll give it the same name as the description. And I'll select the drop down, put it in my test VPC. On that inbound rule, we are going to add a rule. And the rule is going to be HTTP. And on that source, we are going to click in here. And we are going to select our application load balancer. So this is saying that when traffic is coming from port 80 on HTTP, our EC2 is only going to accept that traffic if it's coming from our application load balancer. And we are going to do the same thing for HTTPS. Select add rule. Select this drop down. And I'm going to select HTTPS. And again, for the source, we are only going to accept HTTPS traffic only when it's coming from the application load balancer security group. Then we are going to add another rule. Select add rule. And we are going to select this drop down. It is going to be SSH. Let's look for SSH. And we are only going to accept SSH only when it's coming from our SSH security group. So these are the three rules you need to add. Make sure your HTTP and HTTPS is coming from your application load balancer security group and SSH is coming from your SSH security group. Then scroll down and click create security group. And the last security group we need to create is the security group for our database. So select security group, select create security group. 
I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it database security group. And I'll give it the same name as the description. I'm going to select this drop down and put it in my test BPC. I'm going to add a rule. On that type, look for MySQL and Aurora. Select it. It is going to be port 3306. The source, we are going to click in here. The source is only going to accept that traffic only when it's coming from our web server security group. So select your web server security group in here and scroll down and click create security group. And that is all the security groups we need for this application. And with that, we are done creating our VPC. In the next lecture, we are going to create our NAT gateways so that instances in our private subnet can have access to the internet. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next lecture.